Alright, well, hit the button. Making a video. I think I'll just do a quick effortless video. Yay! The standard effortless video. Redundant, but different. Uh, okay, so, hey, what is life? What is it to be in the universe? What is it to exist? What is existence? Alright, yay! Alright, it's made up of matter. Okay, energy. That's what it's made out of, actually. And that energy is made out of little bits of stuff and blah, 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 blah. It's all mechanical, cause and effect. Little things do things, bang into things. No magic, no, no whatever. It's just uh, cause and effect. Um, everything has properties, really simple, basic properties, and they do what they're required to do. It's like gravity, stuff just falls. That's what it does, <laughs> because the force applied, and it's always consistent, and always does the same thing, and blah, blah, blah. So you have these strong, uh, weak n nuclear forces that hold these little bits of quanta together. Uh, you know, and then you got these chemical forces that are basically statico electromagnetico um, that hold pieces of chemistry together, ions uh, and atoms. Uh, it's basically electron stuff. Electrons are shared, uh, atoms will stay next to each other as long as they're sharing atoms. They'll stay kind of glued to each other. And it requires some other new chemistry to come along to break them apart, and that might free a little bit of quanta, a little electron or photon or some other little bit of energy will be released and uh, that's sort of how the game is played. So the universe has a whole bunch of energy consolidated in it. It's all kind of condensated. So whether it was a big bang or uh, whether the big bang happens every trillion years or it doesn't really matter. If it recycles, expands, contracts, who knows what the universe is doing? Who cares? We know where we came from. We know what we're a byproduct of, and that's what we are. We're a byproduct, byproduct of a cause and effect material universe. So all this heavy matter, these heavy elements, um, are made in suns, supernovas. So whatever the number is, it's speculated that there's a half dozen or so supernovas were required to create the elements that are on planet Earth now, um, the heavy elements. And so you got like a hundred of these elements these atoms um, that are manufactured in the universe. And that's it. There's just a hundred of them. No big deal. And so you got the hydrogen inside the sun turns into helium. The helium turns into deuterium, whatever. I don't know. Lithium. Who knows? I can't remember the next one. But anyway, and you get the carbon, oxygen. And anyway, these are all different kinds of elemental atoms and they combine and they're reactive so some of these elements are very reactive so they form hard compounds all over the place and carbon is one of those you probably heard of carbon carbon sink this is all a carbon sink because it's holding carbon out of the atmosphere uh, and that's sort of the game so all the oil in the ground is basically carbon taken out of the, the atmosphere in terms of uh, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and it's put into the ground and now we're releasing it back into the atmosphere again which creates a greenhouse effect, which creates global warming, which blah, 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 Venus. <laughs> Venus has a, uh, a, a, a carbon problem. Uh, <laughs> lots of other heavy elements there too, but whatever, that's a whole nother subject. Anyway, so on Earth it's been rather stable. This stuff sloshed around in a sea, presumably. Uh, no oxygen atmosphere yet, but uh, lots of compounds, okay? so the the elements were banging into each other. The carbon was combining with the oxygen. It's combining with all these other little elements, creating compounds, little connected through their electrons, elements connected through electrons into, you know, forms. And some one of these forms turned out to be a, a rather sophisticated but complicated. It's only made out of four or five different parts, but they can sequence. And it's called a DNA molecule is what we call it now. And uh, it has this unique feature that if you split it in half, if you cut it down its middle, it will recombine to its original form. And it's not doing it on purpose or by design or by anything. It's just a happenstance that that's the way the molecule formed was in these two strands. And it will always reduplicate the two strands. It will take, if it's got one strand left, it will make its opposite reciprocal on the other side. And, uh, so somewhere in the process, that DNA molecule, that piece of peanut butter, became more than peanut butter. Because another piece of chemistry came along that unzipped it. 
that like to eat the stuff in between the DNA molecule, the proteins. And uh, it was attracted to it. It was connected to it. And it just inched its way along, knocking out the spokes, holding the molecule together. And that's what chemistry does. It hits screws with each other. They affect each other. They put spots in things. They distort and uh, pollute. That's it. They pollute each other. And so the DNA was polluted by this other chemistry. But the uh, weird side is, is that this other chemistry facilitated a happening, a perfect storm event, where bang, you know, the DNA combined with the unzipper, combined with a membrane that only lets certain amino acids in, bang, you got a reproducing cell now. Because the DNA read, is read by the chemistry, it's split in half, and it decides a sequence of events. The DNA is basically a ladder and chemistry falls down the ladder a certain way and in falling down the ladder in a certain way certain parts are thrown off of it that create a, a sequence of events that uh, basically dictate the form, the shape of the replication, the copy being made. And so now you have uh, the beginnings of a new plateau of physics where we have a replicating molecule and now a new uh, a form of, of rules that are going to be applied to replicating molecules. They're different than non-replicating molecules. And so these little machines now, we'll call them, these little chemical machines, uh, replicate away. And uh, the first hurdle is that they run into is that, yeah, replicating is really cool, but no one happens if you keep replicating is you consume everything, you eat every bit of food there is, and you have so many of you that you suffocate each other, basically. You steal each other's oxygen. Well, not that you're breathing oxygen then. So anyway, that's sort of the point. We, they weren't breathing oxygen then. So this chemistry, these little machines, uh, probably suffocate themselves out many times. And then eventually, because the, the blueprint can change a little tiny bit through error in copying the blueprint, and so you get a, a broken copy, but that broken copy can be survivable. And more important, it can be an enhancement. And so in a world where you got a ton of toilet water, it would be really good if you could drink toilet water and it made you feel good. And so the mutations did that. And eventually we became capable of eating our own pollution. And uh, so the oxygen atmosphere was born, a new kind of pollution. Uh, but when we're suited to uh, eating, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, and so it, it just keeps cascading like that, a new hurdle. But, you know, okay, so the hurdle was there was too much, too much consumption, too much reproduction. So there had to be a limit. So very early in the process somewhere, no doubt, a mutated variety that had a time limit built into it because it, its structure broke down over time. Uh, would have the advantage because it wouldn't do this excessive population growth, uh, exponential expansion, and then exponential contraction. It was able to be more stable because it had mortality. So it was replacing the existing population, and the existing population would die uh, sensibly and let the new copy own the future. Uh, so born was our mortality. Uh, and it's been a model that had to be stuck to for all the organisms basically that you know of have that mortality built into them because they wouldn't be here. They wouldn't have survived uh, history if they didn't. Uh, it's necessary to being able to reproduce. And you have to reproduce to do the experiments that uh, enable you to do the modifying. You need to do lots of experiments to get positive mutations. Positive mutations might only happen one in a million births. So the more births you do um, that don't cost anything in terms of you fire environmentally, the more experiments you can do, the more likely you are to evolve, uh, to change. And so it's these machines keep fighting with each other. So first it was the plants and, uh, you know, in the oceans, the algaes and the whatnots, planktons and uh, and also organisms, the game became, this, is, this all represents energy. 
So when a, a pile of chemistry gets complicated, it now has a long DNA molecule because now there's a bunch of instructions. Kill yourself, do this, do that, reproduction, blah, blah, blah. Lots of stuff can be written in there. And so it gets more and more complicated. It gets more and more expensive to make the copy. Survivability becomes more and more expensive. Need more parts. So the, these little buggers uh, said, where do we get the parts? And they started looking at each other and saying, hey, I'll get them from you. You got lots of parts inside of you. And basically, they became cannibals. Started killing their own fundamental kind. Uh, their, the older versions got eaten, essentially, by the newer versions. Now, that was probably the new game. The more aggressive, uh, the more likely you are to win in this kind of fight. It's who bites first, wins. Uh, so anyway, that was probably the game being played. So lots of animals created with mouths and anuses, better to eat you with and uh, steal your energy. Because the sun is not, although the sun has a ton of energy flying out of it, obviously uh, it's not a ton all at once. Uh, the oil in the ground represents millions of years of daily solar exposure. So getting your bit every day isn't all that efficient. That's why these plants don't move. That's why they sit here. It's because they can only get so much energy from the sun directly. It's not enough to have a brain to be mobile. You need a lot of energy to do that. So anyway, animals became carnivorous in the sense that they're either going to eat those those planty things with all that sugar and fruit and the seeds they bear, or they'll just look at each other and say, yeah, I'll get it right from the source. <laughs> You're made out of the same stuff I am. I'll just take your stuff. Mammal eating mammal kind of thing. Uh, oh my, horror, actually. But anyway, okay, so, yeah, so now you get the, 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 all these variety of animals. Now you got the fishes and the fish crawl out of the sea and you know, on their little finnies and you got the mud skippers and you move your way right, right up to the reptiles and then uh, you know animal is born and some of the animals go back to the ocean like the uh, the porpoises and the whales and the rest of the mammals in the ocean and turtles went back snakes went back um, but anyway most organisms well most there's more variety of animal here on the terrestrial space still. Um, lots of little creatures that were always in the ocean, they stayed in the ocean. So that's the other thing, people think evolution makes change, but what it makes even more is when it gets something that works, it holds on to it. Uh, dragon fries, dragon fries, <laughs> dragon flies and crocodiles haven't changed much in you know 300 million years. Uh, it's a good design, durable, it don't need to be improved, and nothing's going to outcompete it. It's raw, it's as efficient in terms of its consumption of energy as you can get. It uses up everything it gets, and it's uh, one hell of a feeding machine. And you can kick it around, and it don't die easy. It's tough, mean, nasty thing. And uh, yeah, something like that will last a long time. <laughs> that's a design that's hard to beat. So there is a war here, a competition, and there are winners over the long term. And I mean long term, long time winners. And uh, species like us are sort of the little time winners. Lots of those, lots of species who didn't last too long. Good design for a little while, but something came along, found its weakness and uh, ate its ass. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, most things have gone extinct. Most designs were failures. They did, need, they did get wiped out by some changed design. Some of the changes aren't necessarily improvements. They're just different enough, and the other one can't fix it. It doesn't have time to re-evolve, to adjust to the new predator, the new danger. Uh, a virus comes along, weakens it, and everything just runs right over it real quick. So it's that kind of thing. There's not necessarily a fair fight. There's just a fight. And uh, yeah, there's winners and losers, period. Um, and it's all measured over the long term. Uh, short term wins are, you know, 
you, you won't even be part of the friggin' fossil record. You'll be nothing. You won't even be recognized as existing. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. I can't recognize all the species that have ever existed anyway. But anyway, that's the game. We're just gladiator machines uh, stealing our bits of energy uh, to maintain the body so it can replicate another copy of a DNA molecule. The DNA molecule is doing the evolving. All the changes take place to that to that to draft uh, model, the design on paper, and we're just the uh, the demo. <laughs> we're just the uh, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, I can't think of the word. But anyway, yeah, that's all we are. We're we're just the the thing that you know, you follow the blueprints. You make one. You put it in the world, it gets tested. If it works, that uh, blueprint goes into the future. The blueprint's in the pocket of it, so to speak. And it moves on to the, the next generation of the game, the next uh, round of the fight. So there's just a million zillion rounds. The bell rings, bang, uh, something lives, something dies. Uh, bell rings, uh, somebody raises their hand, you win! And then, and then bang, ding, bell rings, and then all of a sudden you don't win anymore. It's that way day to day in our own lives. There's winners and losers in terms of the human race. There's winners and losers in terms of the species that exist on Earth. And it's just an insidious game replicating a DNA molecule. We're all just dupes of chemistry. We're all just uh, vessels. We're all bags. Uh, we're all... Uh, just something to be uh, consumed and disposed of, like a styrofoam cup or something. Uh, that's life on Earth, and it's fail, and uh, we should move on, try something else. So anyway, this video might be complete crap because of the wind, but we'll see. I got half the microphone covered, but it might not be enough. Spider tried to get me. But I deterred him. Alright, till next time. Alright, storms are coming, I guess. Anyway, um, yeah, I did kind of abbreviate the ending there. And it is a little more complicated for human beings. Didn't really get to the whole acquisition of our nervous system. And, uh, and that it's all tools. That's what all these animals have. They all have individual tools to be able to tear apart <laughs> you know, the uh, things in their world and suck out their brains or steal whatever parts they're after. And uh, for mammals, one of the tools, one of the tools is this brain that we have. Complex reflex, uh, reflexes piled on top of reflexes on top of reflexes. Essentially all our language is, is um, reflexes to words. You hear a word, your brain reflexively reacts to that word in combination with other words, in time to emotion of other words. It's a cascade of cause and effect uh, that takes place on a conceptual level, the whole world word level, and then even on a quantum mechanical uh, energy level. There are these patterns of energy moving from uh, organism to organism, uh, in our case from human to human, in our communication. This whole long sentence has an awful lot of information in it. awful lot of reflexes are happening inside your brain uh, as you're, as you're c contemplating, as you're uh, consuming these, um, these strings of bits and bytes of information uh, that are being conveyed. Uh, your brain is reacting, little keys are being hit, little switches are turned on and off, uh, new words are uh, uh, produced, put in blinky red lights inside your brain, neon, whatever. Uh, yeah, and that's the function of the organism. And all that exists to make us more efficient in terms of consuming and reproducing. And. Uh, that's it. There's no other game in town. That's the game we're playing. And we're still playing it horribly crudely uh, and uh, completely uh, possessed by a motivating 
uh, mechanism of desire. And uh, the desires are um, not, co not incidentally, um, you know, obviously constructed to get us to do the food, sex, uh, preservation, self-preservation, your kind preservation, your genetic code preservation kind of thing. And uh, just gladiator war. Just so we can say, we're here. Well, that's a, not much of an accomplishment for the horrific price paid for it. And obviously, uh, the forces themselves had no realization of the, the fact that something sentient would be created, something that could be, they could en endure a harmful, unpleasant, nasty experience, a conscious experience that is just on its face, repugnant, <laughs> you know, obnoxious, uh, you know, and that's basically all it's made out of. All this matter is just doing the same thing, but on a different scale. It's all plus and minus. It's just that it's not doing it through a feeling mechanism. So the plus and minus doesn't have a, an incidental weight or gravity uh, where ours does. Uh, but it's still the same thing. Uh, the universe is built out of just things, uh, you know, tending towards something or tending away from something. Uh, attraction, repulsion. Not uh, much else happening. Um, not much else guiding uh, what is the essence of the energy of the universe, which is the movement of a photon. Uh, that's all this is. But gazillions and but gazillions and but gazillions times but gazillion uh, photons. Little bits desperately flying, <laughs> desperately uh, zooming about at the speed of light. Uh, and arrangements are formed and created. Uh, and I get all this nuance, but it's nuance that's not doing anything. It's, uh, there's nothing to do. There's no, nothing to accomplish. It's, uh, we're chasing the gratification of needs that didn't need to exist. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, <laughs> it's the original sin, uh, in the sense that you're, you just create the negative first and then, uh, Create the illusion of positive in removing the negative. Create the illusion of attraction uh, as, as if it is um, something other than a repulsion of where it was. Uh, so, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not good days for me lately. Jaw, ear, treble, or something more again, possibly. But whatever. Personal complaint. Never mind. Not in a Nephilim's video. <laughs> yeah, we won't have any of that. Anyway, I think that's enough of a video. So, till the next time, and such, and so forth and whatnot.